Hi. Hi, Kate. Nice to see Kate you. Garvey is the co-founder of Project Everyone. She is a, a master communicator. Um, we're going to show a video in just a second, but I wanted to just quickly introduce her first. Um, Kate kind of first came to really big prominence as a top person in the office of Tony Blair when he was prime minister. Uh, she helped him get re-elected three times. She then has been very deeply involved in many NGOs and nonprofit organizations, on, especially on the communications side, um, Live 8 con pro, uh, concerts, uh, Global Fund, uh, UNHCR, Maternal Mortality Campaign, Make Poverty History, et cetera. But now she's doing Project Everyone. And rather than try to explain that right now, we'll get to that after we show this video. So let's watch that and come right back to Kate. This is a very important story, the important story. In the midst of COVID-19, it's an historic opportunity to look at the facts of the world as it is, and then to focus on the solutions to some of our greatest problems. Today, we feel the weight of history on our shoulders. The whole planet is at stake. The way we have been moving leads nowhere and that we need to change course. We need to reduce global emissions by 50% by 2030. This cannot go on. You know it, I know it, and we know what we need to do. Poverty is not natural. It is man-made, so poverty is not inevitable. Inequality for women is one of the world's great injustices, and it must be, and will be, swept away. We are bringing young people to the table now, not as a token, but to take that baton, to take up the gauntlet, and to move forward. Fear and hopelessness died. Strength, power, and courage was born. It's a myth that each and every one of us doesn't have the ability to change the world dramatically and quickly. There is power in every decision we make. In the 75 years since the United Nations was founded, the human race has never had to face a set of challenges like we do right now. But together, we can overcome them. One of many beautiful videos and works of graphic and commercial uh, promotional sophistication that Kate has been involved in. Um, so that is a promotion for a longer video about the sustainable development goals. Why not, maybe you should just quickly describe the SDGs for anyone who doesn't know what they are, and then maybe quickly tell the story of Project Everyone and how it came to be. Good question. Um, so the Sustainable Development Goals, sometimes known as the Global Goals, um, were formed in 2015 through a huge consultation led by the United Nations. Every country, 193 countries uh, were involved, but civil society, business, um, and a, a huge outreach to the general public to agree on a set of 17 goals, you couldn't make it up. We thought there might be 10, but um, it was a genuinely uh, democratic and consultative process. So we came up with 17 goals uh, that would set out a roadmap to how to improve the world for people and for planet by 2030. And I think what's brilliant about them and the reason why Project Everyone exists is that they are universal. It's not a global north to global south proposition. It is for everyone. Um, they are interchangeable and interdivisible, as it were. They connect with each other. They um, also address both the development issues, the, the Millennium De Development Goals, their predecessors address, but also the sustainable issues, the economic issues, the gender and injustice issues that are so very current for our generations. Um, and so they, they really are the blueprint for 
particularly in this crisis that we are in, to get us out of it. The goals are the answer. And, um, and so why Project Everyone? Well, we knew that the previous set of goals had, uh, had some success in setting some deadlines um, and encouraging further action, whether it be on maternal mortality, HIV AIDS, TB, malaria, things that we'd, I'd worked on and, and my, one of my co-founders, Rich Curtis, had worked on. Um, and how we'd used 20, 2005 when I was in government and then out of government to sort of to try and accelerate progress to the MDGs. But we didn't really talk about them. They were this sort of backhand discussion somewhere in the UN. And we we believed that when the sustainable development goals came into being, that if they had become more famous, if people felt more pressure about the deadlines and the delivery around them, if more people knew about them, if businesses felt engaged in them, if activists felt that this was something that a language they could use, that it would actually increase the acceleration of achieving them um, and ultimately the best way to uh, improve our planet um, and everyone on it. So we got behind an effort in 2015 to make the goals as famous as possible. Um, and we knew that with 17 of them, quite a, I mean, they're beautiful and brilliant, but that's a lot for people to get their head around. We needed to kind of make them understandable. And we started with a brand. I'm wearing the goals pin here. You may have seen them in the video before. Um, it was a way we worked with a great Swedish designer and the United Nations to find a, a, a sort of common palatable way of bringing them together. We created the icons um, and, the, and the language. We worked very hard on how you might explain them to end poverty, fix climate change, address injustices and, and inequalities. Um, and to socialize that and work with the United Nations and some great partners to give them the loudest launch. So Global Citizen had Beyonce do a concert. That was a fantastic way to launch it. Uh, we work with Google. We actually work with Google on this last uh, Nations United venture to get the homepage as a promotion. We set up something called the World's Largest Lesson with UNICEF, which still goes on and reaches children across the world with lessons and programs around the goals. Um, and we tried every way. The te tech companies came in, the, the telecoms companies came in, they texted people uh, with news of the goals. And uh, we tried to create that buzz, which was great. However, we then realized as we sort of thought we'd retire and we'd set up um, uh, a fun campaign that uh, if we didn't keep the pressure on, that it was no one else's job to talk about the goals as a whole and to, to help sort of increase that awareness and to encourage accountability on them. So Project Everyone stayed, here we are six years on and uh, we're still trying to get the goals out there. We're still trying to make them as um, interesting and, um, and uh, sort of achievable as possible to make them on the front of people's minds when they're addressing whatever they do in business and civil society, individuals, everyone feeling they can play their part. It is incredible that we have sort of an integrated to-do list for the world. Yeah. Um, but if you all hadn't done the work you did on the logo and the periodic chart of 17 graphics, um, there's no question they would be just another bureaucratic phenomenon in my opinion anyway. Um, and it does feel like partly and largely because of the, the, what the work you laid the groundwork with that they are catching on in awareness in many, many quarters I can tell you at Techonomy, we've used those graphics time and time again since they're free to use and we've used them to kind of uh, contextualize many of our own articles, particularly in our print magazine, but also in our conferences. Um, but uh, it is something of a statement about the UN that they didn't have that a marketing department or something. Uh, maybe this is the first time they've tried to do something this ambitious. I suppose it is. But um, anyway, that's just a comment. How are we doing on the goals? Let's just go straight to the key question. Yeah. What do you feel about where we stand on this ambitious agenda? Yeah. Well, it wasn't, I mean, I just say on the United Nations, a lot of the work we do in collaboration with them. So that film was in collaboration with the United Nations, with Amina Mohammed, and uh, who's the Deputy Secretary General, 
and the mastermind behind the goals and then the secretary general. Um, but it's, you know, they have a big job and they have to do the proper job. So we just come in and help um, when, when we can. Um, but yeah, so it's not a good picture. It wasn't before the pandemic. Um, however, progress was somewhat happening in certain areas. There's no doubt that the pandemic has set back the goals. Um, we work with the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation on uh, a campaign, a report, and when possible, an event um, every September, which tracks 18 indicators on the goals. And no surprise in 2020, um, all had pretty much been reversed. Um, and so it, 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 is a, it is a serious situation. However, there, ha there are some sense senses some in in certain areas of the pandemic helping bring back the collaboration ultimately needed to achieve the goals also the innovation um, and the importance of data the importance of vaccines the importance of the fundamental uh, need for basic health care social protection all of these things that we had been suggesting and the goals set out the plan um, that was needed um, are now back on the table in a different way. Obviously, it's not the way you would want it to have happened, but um, I'm hopeful that um, countries are coming around the table together, that they are raising the awareness importance of all sorts of things, inclu including behavior change, um, yeah. which of course is now front of mind as well with this pandemic. So. Um, it's, it, it is not a, a great picture, but, but I think there are signs of uh, that progress is possible. Well, let's just say it's, it's hard to achieve goals like no poverty and zero yeah. hunger. I mean, this is, this is only just, but it is unbelievably challenging. And if it could be achieved by 2030, I mean, we should have a global celebration like we've never had before not to mention climate action and all the other things. But I will add one thing to what you said, in my opinion, and in, even in this conference we've experienced. Yesterday, um, we had uh, Doreen Bogdan-Martin of the ITU Telecommunication Development Bureau talking about the importance of connectivity to achieve the goals. Yeah. And I know as a technology person who was very passionate about the goals from the beginning, um, it was deeply disappointing that there was no goal for global connectivity because many of us felt that this is the pathway by which you achieve almost everything else. If you don't bring everyone in, you're not gonna give them all the things they need or they're not gonna be able to get it for themselves. Um, so that has changed. And I think the pandemic made yeah. a radical shift in the awareness of the importance of the digital society, particularly for governments. And so that's a real positive. But I wanna ask you a question, uh, Reza Jafari, who's a, a long time techonomist, um, has a question. He actually says he's one of the co-authors of the, of the Sustainable Development Goals, which I didn't know. Uh, he was head, head of ITU. Um, he asks, are you pleased with the level of progress across the board or, it, or, or are some countries doing much better and others falling behind? And what course of action in particular should we take now that we might not have known to take before? Yeah, I mean, I, so in some ways, I can judge better on the, I suppose, the communication of it, the use of the goals. And I would say this, that in, in my experience, businesses are using the goals in a way not seen, certainly uh, in, in the last decade. If I take yeah. 2005, when um, we organized the Live 8 concerts and Make Poverty History campaign, business weren't even at the table. It was a conversation between the politicians and some NGOs. Now you have a set of businesses that are not only at the table, but they are um, actually embracing the goals. They find it a good plan and framework to use and, and to sort of hold themselves accountable to. Um, so I think that is progress. And to your previous speaker's point, you, you know, there, that is a way that um, businesses are finding that they can engage and engage with politicians. Um, I think cities are playing a really interesting part both in terms of adopting the goals and holding themselves accountable to them and there are some countries 
um, at, at the last goalkeepers uh, that we did host in 2019 um, in New York, Jacinda Ardern and uh, President Sanchez of Spain, they both came and talked about the goals and how they were um, addressing them through their own programs. And I think if you have a sustainable development minister, if you have a, um, if you have a system within government which is driving this agenda, it really does help. It doesn't have to be called the goals minister, but if, it, if that principle is being addressed through government, I think that is really important. And then there's the younger activists and grassroots organizations who do identify with the goals, who are driving this forward and, um, and were part of a movement in 2019 and 2020 to um, start calling on leaders, whether it be from Black Lives Matter, Me Too movement, uh, the climate movement, to come together and say, you've got to address all these goals. So yes. I, I, whilst I'm not talking about the, the specifics of, of, uh, of, of each goal themselves, I think the embrace of them as, as a whole has seen some great success. Yes, and, and a lot of, you call them business Avengers. You have a whole program mm -hmm. where companies embrace one particular goal. I know Unilever is one that's done that. Another company that has a big commitment to a goal is a company whose CEO is going to be at our next conference, Health and Wealth of America on April 21st through 20th, uh, 20th through 22nd. Um, a company used to be called Weight Watchers. Now they call themselves yeah. WW and they are very much committed to the hunger goal, very committed. Which you wouldn't think they might necessarily be. Um, could we put? Well, it needs help. It's it's you know one of the worst yeah. um, achieved, I would say. Right. The hunger goal needs help. Okay. We did ask in the poll at the beginning, how optimistic are you we can achieve the SDGs by 2030? Uh, okay. Only three percent were very optimistic. Forty yeah. percent said not at all. Uh, two. 6% said, what are the SDGs? So that's good that we gave them a chance to know. 53% uh, were somewhat optimistic. Okay, let's get that down now. But um, what haven't I asked you, Kate, that this audience ought to know about where we're headed? I know one of your own, um, one of your own projects is to get these more embedded in government, particularly. Talk about you know anything that I you, you want to add? Well, no, we it's just it's just to say that um, we went into 2020 thinking it was going to be this super year for progress and and mm. um, that all these big events were happening, all these big political moments were happening, and of course it all changed. And yet this year, with a change in uh, leadership in the U.S., we actually and some sense of the vaccine program allowing us to think beyond uh, the immediate, um, there are some important conferences on gender, generation equality forum at the G7, at the G20, the UK hosting both the G7 and the COP, um, the climate conference in November, uh, the United Nations General Assembly. There are some big moments where progress could actually happen. People could come back around the table. Multi multilateralism could play its part. And, and I think the important thing there is to also bring in the business leaders, bring in the activists, bring in civil society, um, and as many people as possible to, to include them in, in these commitments and moving forward. And I'm hopeful for that. I've seen some good progress with the Generation Equality Forum. Um, I think all eyes uh, should be on these moments this year. It, it is interesting that this whole of society approach is increasingly being discussed for more or less all of our problems. I, no. I don't know whether he said it exactly this way, but Oren Siegel, when I did yeah. my prep call with him, said the exact same thing about extremism and disinformation, that mm -hmm. without a whole of society approach, we can't achieve it. You're saying mm -hmm. this about the SDGs where it may be a little more self-evident, but I think businesses are starting to realize it in, in the enlightened quarters. I think a lot of the people from business on our session today realize it. I know those who are members of Techonomy, many of them do, but boy, we have so much work to do and the SDGs underscore it. But if you guys had not done this extraordinary branding and marketing job, uh, the world would be way worse off. So all I can do is say, thank you, Kate. <laughs> And it was delightful to have you. Lovely and I hope we will stay closely in touch with, with your organization and with you personally and see you in person before too long. Lovely.
Thank you, David. Great to see Thank you. Thank you so much. Have a great day.